What do you think of this system of yours? Well, I think it's as good as any. Oh, better than some. And the whole point is that it's very cheap, very simple, and very easy for the ordinary man in the street to understand. You know, there's nothing complicated about it. And it uh, does a lot of things. It um, cuts out the pollution. It's very cheap to install. And, uh, well, it's the only thing possible when the petrol goes, anyway. Harold Bate is an inventor. For 17 years, he's been driving along the lanes of Devon in a car powered by methane gas. It's a standard car modified by a simple converter he's invented, and he makes his own methane gas from barnyard manure. This is the material that methane gas is made from. Uh, in nature, it's rotted down. It takes some thousands of years to form uh, natural gas or methane gas. It's all the same thing. But to, to do a quick thing on it and to form it instead of thousands of years, to form it in a week's time, I use manure. And the best type of manure I find for uh, setting the thing off quickly and producing gas within a week is a mixture of pig manure uh, poultry manure, straw and water. Once the thing is set off, any other kind of manure can be added to it. And uh, the uh, digester is filled, the um, pig manure uh, forms heat, and the poultry manure forms nitrogen, and the water forms hydrogen, and the straw forms carbon. Now all these ingredients together uh, uh, cause the bacteria in the manure to get to work. They first consume the oxygen from the water. This leaves hydrogen. And then other bacteria get to work on the hydrogen and form it into methane gas. Now then, after about a week at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the gas begins to come off. It's producing 25 pounds per square inch pressure of gas. And to make sure it is producing gas, I, uh, I light up the Bunsen burner. The gas is going through water, you see. This is just to clear any residue from the manure. And there's the gas being produced. Uh, there we are. Now, then, I know there's gas, so I turn it off again from the digester and connect the pipe from the digester. Onto the compressor. Now the other end of the pipe from the compressor is connected to the gas bottle, you see. So what we do now is to start up the, com the compressor, which draws the gas from the digester and pumps it into the gas bottle. Then we take the gas bottle and put it in the boot of the car, connect it up to my uh, gas converter, which can enable the carburetor to use either gas or petrol by switching from one fuel to the other. And when you're running on methane gas, you have a, a high octane gas, about 127. You can't make an engine knock on it. You can start up in top gear. There's no carbon monoxide, there's no poison fumes. And what's more, uh, a car that's been running on petrol and then switched to methane, the methane will decarbonize the car and blow the carbon out of the exhaust. And the only exhaust from the methane is a, is a slight water vapor, which vaporizes out in the exhaust system. 
So you've got a clean gas and a powerful gas because uh, gasoline produces 27% complete combustion, where methane gas produces 98% complete combustion. Therefore, you've, not, you've more power. And then away we go. And the actual cost of the gas is nothing, provided you get the manure for nothing. And uh, of course, as long as there is, there are, as long as there are human beings and animals, there'll be manure. And as long as there's manure, there'll be methane gas. So therefore, we shall always have power when all the carboniferous fuels are finished. Right, well, I'll show you the gas bottle that supplies the engine with the methane gas. Now, this small bottle I use on this car, and it contains the equivalent of about three gallons of gasoline. But uh, you actually get more mileage on gas than you do on gasoline. This is connected by a tube underneath the car up to the converter in the, under the bonnet. Um, and that supplies the gas into the carburetor so that you can switch from gas or petrol or diesel oil, whatever you're using, uh, as you're going along without getting out of the car. Mr. Bate uses only a three-gallon bottle. He can fill it with the gas produced from about 50 pounds of dry manure. You've got a very high-octane fuel, which is completely anti-knock. It's really what you call a sweet as a nut. Now, the gas bottle in the boot is connected by tubing up to what I call uh, the auto gas converter device. Now, this is a, a very sensitive um, suction or vacuum operated valve. Now, the gas bottle is connected here to the suction end of the, uh, the inlet end of the uh, auto gas device, goes through the, the device, and the, the outlet end is connected to a gas jet in the carburetor here. Uh, the suction from the carburetor operates the device and pulls it open and shut as you operate the accelerator. And this allows the gas to come through into the carburetor. And uh, the old thing is, is, is automatic, it's all work from the foot accelerator. And it can be fitted, uh, taken off one car and fitted onto another. It can be fitted on a one horsepower engine or a 50 horsepower engine, the same thing. And it operates the same. Or you can use any other gas with it, propane, butane, hydrogen, what have you. All right, I'm changing over to methane now. Some gas is better than petrol, it's faster, uh, about 10 mile an hour faster top speed and quicker acceleration, quiet engine, runs cooler, never dirties the plugs. It takes about five or six years before your engine needs decorking, if at all. It's got to be reliable, it's got to be efficient, but at the same time, it's got to be cheap. Then the average price of one in America is $400, and mine's $34. Is a hell of a difference. In the last few years, the public debate about pollution, clean cars, the energy crisis, has brought a flood of inquiries to this quiet spot in southern England. In a modest way, Huddled bait has become famous. And one from Australia there, another one from Antwerp, another one, I don't know where that's from, looks like France. This is from, that's from Germany. You've got one here from Tonga. Uh, a lot of these are inquiring uh, for how much is the device and how can they send the money, you see. And, uh, and then amongst them we get about a dozen or, or so orders 
from people that have already written to us. You see, we've given them the details. But uh, usually, there's, there's usually an average of about 50 or 60 um, inquiries, and some days there's 90 and 100. Uh, some days we get about uh, a dozen orders, and another day we might get 20. But we've got 10,000 letters in the house. I've received letters from about 22 companies now who want to manufacture the thing in America, including about four, four oil companies. Uh, but uh, I've, I've put all that, that kind of thing in the hands of our bank, so the bank manager is going to handle it for me and uh, put on an agency to deal with anyone like that abroad, because it's impossible to deal by post with that sort of thing. And I've got so many things to do. I've, I've got a lot more inventions that I want to develop. And, uh, of course, I can't do it while we, we have so much work on hand. There's only the two of us, and we're working sometimes till 3 o'clock in the morning. What other writing inventions? letters. Pardon? What other inventions? Oh, well, I've got an electric car that should be self-propelled. I'm going to have a go at the man-powered flight and a self-propelled bicycle and oh, Lord, all sorts of things. Well, this is a, a self-propelled bicycle, or partly self-propelled anyway, that I uh, were invented and worked on uh, in my spare time, you know, mm -hmm. when I did have a bit of spare time. But I haven't finished it yet. There are one or two things, one or two bugs to be ironed out. And one of the biggest snags is when you get up to speed, you have a job to stop it. Because it's quite easy to get up to 40 miles an hour on it. The idea is that you sit on it, undulations of the road, cause the saddle to rise and fall, and that drives the back wheel, you see. It's the action, of, the action of your weight on the saddle. The rougher the road, the faster it goes. Now, see? Put your weight on the saddle, and it drives the back wheel, and that drives the bike off. And every movement of the saddle is driving the bike forward. <laughs> Here we are. All right, let's go. Which side do you get on? Uh -huh. right. No, I'll give you a bit of a push to start off. But it's going uphill. OK. I say it's going up pretty fast, saying it's uphill here. And it's rather high-geared for road work at the moment. It was built, really, to test out on a track, you see. But uh, suitably geared, it, it makes it very simple to pedal and... It's pretty well effortless when once you get on the main road. Here he comes, he's almost airborne. Hmm? He's almost airborne. We <laughs> 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 can't stop. <laughs> the, all the apparatus fitted on the back that causes it to be self-propelled is... Um, made so that it can be bolted onto any, any existing bicycle, because there are already millions of them, and therefore you won't have to, uh, to build anything special. Just sell the uh, equipment to bolt on, mm -hmm. and then you've got a bike that uh, will be as good as an motorcycle, but there'll be no tax on it, there'll be no garage needed, there'll be no insurance needed, well, there'll be no nothing, no petrol, no anything. <laughs> a bait special. Yeah, and it's... And of course, it's a, it's, it's an improvement on the ordinary bicycle. As I say, it's, the bicycle hasn't been improved for 70 years, except the looks of it and all that. So this is a, one way out of it of getting an easy ride, mm -hmm. you know. Well, good night, Mr. Bates. Thank you very oh, much for a grand day. And Where's thank you. Your wife? She's here. Okay. Right. Well, cheerio. All right.
Thank you.